Religions are the original multidisciplinary portals for thinking and behaving. All of the first art is religious. So the religion that I'm founding is called Creation. It is a queer, insurrectionary, science fiction, climate change religion. Creation involves dance steps, glorious songs, banging disco anthem, animation, mysteries. It's an artwork and a religion, and it's a religion that you can dance to. I was an extremely religious child. I spent a few years convinced that I was gonna be a nun. I lost my religion altogether by the time I was 11. But I have a religious approach, I think, and a real lot of my work comes from that. So creation feels like the culmination of a whole lot of works that I've made that have considered religion from various angles. I've been making collages as a like thinking process since I was a schoolgirl. So all of my work kind of starts through collage. Collage really helped me develop the idea of creation because I've got lots and lots of books of religious art and I've been chopping them up and recombining them. And they tell you things. You hear the images speak kind of, it's like a Ouija board. You can't really found a religion all by yourself. It has grown into something with substance and heft because I've been working with other people. I commissioned the extraordinary artist S.J. Norman to write a liturgy, the liturgy of the saprophyte. Um, and I produced this series of holy cards. It's really a proper liturgy, it's very complex. It's not intended as something that you understand straight away. So why does the world need a new religion? That's exactly what my dad asked me. We are having such a crisis of belief and believability. The rise of public lying and the absolute end of consequence. It's partly a way to think about how we structure belief, what we believe in and why. The Opera House invited us to present our songs there. The songs all come from poems that all these amazing poets around Australia wrote in response to the liturgy. I mean super duper poets like Ellen Van Nieven and Heather Grace Jones and Brian Fuata, Evelyn Araluen, and then Lex Lindsay turned the poems into songs. Pieces of real contemporary classical religious music. So I did listen to a whole lot of sacred music from around the world and over the ages. Uh, but then what I found was the poem would come with the tune already embedded in the words. So I ended up throwing all of that study out the window and just went with what the poems were telling me their music was. people to come and be part of our beautiful procession and to join in the chant together and then we presented the songs so that was the very first time they'd ever been sung to an audience every religion has music and sometimes those categories collapse perhaps what I mean to say is that all great music has a religion, and this is ours. The Creation Chorale represents a magnificent array of humanity. We have made from fossil fuels. We ask for It's completely inherently genderless, unlike most other choirs that you're going to encounter. They have alto, tenor, soprano, bass, like all of these implicitly gendered roles. 
where we just don't have that. We have these beautiful parts that we can sing in, in whatever range that we want to. As a lot of people in this choir are gender non-conforming or transgender, it allows us to explore music in a space that's not usually as freeing. Resist those mother practice, those reckless planet hackers, defy climate deniers, those reckless dreams. And making a work about crisis inside crisis, which is, I think, giving it more resonance. All no religions have been historically forces for all kinds of ill and some good, but they galvanise people, they gather people. I really hope that creation gets out into the world and gains its own velocity.